Hello and welcome. My name is Manuel Quintana with Pragmatic Works, and as you probably can see from our YouTube, we cover tons of content. Power BI, Power Automate, I mean the entire Power Platform, we cover other various Azure services. So today, what I'm going to talk to you is in regards to Power BI, specifically around DAX. We're going to look at a pre-created example where I'm going to basically enhance it so that I can leverage some dynamic titling. Now this is something that I'm going to accomplish through a card visualization and a DAX measure and we're going to use it specifically, we're going to take advantage of that DAX measure in a card. But honestly, in a ton of properties, like the title property of a visualization, um, quite often you can do this like in certain like text boxes, or in this case, a card visual. You have many options where you can leverage kind of creating dynamic content. And this can really just enhance the experience. So in this case, I've gone through and I've take, taken advantage of a couple of digital storytelling techniques, specifically a drill through. And I'm going to take advantage of the mechanics of that so that I can have a title inside of my drill through page that changes based off of the user's description. That's right. So already drill throughs, report pages, these are great features and this will just enhance it even more. So to do this, let's head on over to my Power BI report, some that we've used in previous examples, but let me set up the scenario for you guys. So here, a simple report, like I said, taking advantage of certain digital storytelling techniques. You can see here when I hover over my bar chart, I'm taking advantage of report page tooltips. We can see as well, if we were to right click, users are presented with an option to leverage a drill through. So it's kind of a top level summary page where people can see the breakdown. My individuals can see the breakdown of failed banks by state and year. But if I want to dive in and I want to know more specifically, let's say right here in Georgia, 2010, there were 21 failed banks. I want to know more. And I've created a drill through page, which accomplishes just that. You can see I've got a table that breaks down what was the city and state, what was the name of the bank, who acquired it, exactly what was the day. And then over here on the right, of course, we have a cool little map to complement that. But the idea is I would like something right here at the top that dynamically changes based off of those users' decisions. When they come here, in this case, it was Georgia's state information. Or if they make a Florida, whatever the choice is, that's what I would like to see. As we know, when you use a drill through, it passes through a value right over here. So to accomplish this, we're going to take advantage of a DAX function called selected value. This has been around for a little bit. I think it was introduced in July 2017, so nothing new, but uh, quite often as they started adding in capabilities, which has been going on for about a year and a half, two years now, where you could make things far more dynamic. Like I said, the title of visualizations, in this case, you can just showcase the value of a measure. Traditionally, people grab a card and they're using that to display a singular metric value. In this case, I'm going to use a card to display the value from a measure combined with some static text. Now, as we can see the breakdown, selected value is that DAX function itself. It, is got, it has two arguments in here, one of that being optional. So really, all you need to do is selected value and give the name of a column, right? What happens is this measure will return a value if whatever you specify the column to be, whatever that column you've chosen in this function, if it has been filtered down to a distinct value. So a singular value, it'll actually return whatever that singular value is. Otherwise, it returns blank unless you take advantage of that secondary argument, the optional argument, alter result. If it isn't bringing back a distinct value, which will either be a blank or just multiple values, then you can have it display whatever you choose. In my case, I'm going to leave that secondary argument there because letting it return blank will work great for my scenario. We're going to do a little bit of testing, right? Because what if also at the same time, they go to that page and we're not looking at a specific state they're looking at multiple states. Well, in that case, obviously, we want to make it so that it's a little more of a broad title there. So in, the, in our scenario, it'll go ahead and say something like all states information. Really, we've kind of controlled our drill through page. As you can see down below, it's not visible. So a user can't navigate to this. The only way they can do it is by making a choice of specifying a state. So there's probably not going to be a circumstance in this case that this will be presented, but we always want to safeguard ourselves just in case. So. Let's go ahead and create that measure and see exactly how we write this out, how we can use this inside of some conditional logic, and it'll get us a nice dynamic title at the top of my drill through page. And why not? I'll add it inside of my report page tooltip as well. So let's dive right in and write this measure. Just right here, I'm going to go ahead and right click failed banks. We'll go with a new measure. Don't forget, you can always hold that control key on your keyboard and you can make this larger or smaller. I've made it as big as possible so it's easy to view. And we're just going to give it a name, which this I'm going to simply call selected state. I'm going to go to the next line to make it a little bit cleaner. And we're going to do this in the form of using a variable, right? I think this just makes formula write a little bit cleaner. 
So in this case, my name of my variable, we'll keep it pretty straightforward, and it's just gonna be called selected state once again. And the contents of that is simply gonna take advantage of our selected value measure. And you can see, of course, the description once again here, it tells us in those square brackets that the secondary argument is optional. So all I need to do is point to my state column in my failed banks table, that's it. This will either return a singular state, or in this case, it's gonna return a blank, one or the other, that's it. So I've defined my variable. I'm gonna go ahead and hit return, which will allow me to specify a DAX expression, which we're just gonna do a logical test, and we know that measure, that variable, because of the measure we're using, is only gonna have one of two options. It's either going to actually have a state, or it's gonna be blank. And we can take advantage of that right here. Basically just doing a test to say, hey, you know what? If that variable, which we can see right there, there it is, if that variable is blank, if that returns true, that means no state has been selected, I'll just do more of a generic kind of term here. I'll say, well, this is gonna just be like all states information, something of that nature, right? But if it does, if it isn't blank, that means it's gonna have the value of a state, I'll say, you know what? bring back whatever the value is of that variable and let's go ahead and combine that in this case concatenate that with so it looks a little bit better so we gotta remember what it's gonna say right it's gonna say ga in my case i have like two letter abbreviation so i'm gonna say ga so georgia's right there state information right just a little bit of literal string we close that out on the if statement and that is really all we want and all we need right so you can go ahead and pause it if you need it but this is taking advantage of that selected value. Now we can put it to you. So if I go over to my drill through here, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my card visualization. I'm gonna just kind of format it here. Let's just kind of put this along the top, All right? Maybe something like that. And let's grab our measure. And you can see right away, it's already showing Georgia. I'm gonna kind of line this up in the middle. I'm also gonna clean it up by getting rid of the category label. We don't need that. I'm also gonna go ahead and turn on the background so it's got a solid background. Actually, it looks like it's got to be, oh, I want zero transparency. We want it to be a solid block there. Uh, and let's just match what we've done around the other sides and we'll just put a border. So you can see. And if we wanted to, I could probably bring this down a little bit so it kinda, yeah, I think that might be a little bit better. You know, you got all the borders. So now, to test this, right, we go back to the summary page. Let's go over to Florida, right? I right click Florida. I go drill through, I go to the state page, Florida state information. So this is going to work across the board. And it works for report page tooltips as well. Right? I can go over to my report page tooltip, add this right in here. Let's go with that card visual. We know because it's, you know, tooltip, it gets a little weird when you're designing it, because it's much smaller. But I still should be able to find a way to fit this right in there. We're gonna have to probably change that the formatting, right? So let's go ahead and uh, we'll do the same thing. I'm gonna turn the background on solid remove that transparency let's go ahead and add the bordering but obviously the size here is a little crazy give myself a little bit of room here though i'm gonna go all the way end to end something like that oh i don't want it touching though there we go and let's change that uh font of this i'm gonna reduce this a smidge get rid of that category label and i think that fits and then like just like the drill through you can see now when we hover over florida it's or illinois in this case here's florida it is dynamically changing so a nice quick fast calculated uh, measure that we created using the dax function selected value and if you wanted you could take advantage of that optional argument take different directions with that as well that could have come into play when we're doing the testing right hey if it's either blank or multiple it's actually going to show this instead we could have taken that into play as well. We could have maybe put a literal string there. A quick, fast little video just to show how we can make dynamic content here for titles, labels, kind of banners at the top. So I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.